Here's what's going to happen at the Toronto real estate market in 2020. Price is going to go up by 10 to 15 percent. Price of new construction probably by more. Today I'm going to discuss with you what are the best, which are the best areas to invest in. Should you look at pre-construction assignments or resale? How much is too much to pay? And should you sell things that you already have? Okay, friends, Yossi Kaplan here, Toronto real estate agent and mortgage broker with Search Realty and Search Mortgage. I help people, investors just like you and me buy, sell, invest in condos, all kinds of real estate, homes, whatever you want. But the focus is always on residential condos because that really is the supplement um, to investment that we can't get anywhere else. So we all know what's going on with the Toronto real estate market, but what's going to happen, and this is the Treb housing market chart just updated uh, last month. Um, it's going to run up like crazy, I think. Um, there's just too many factors coming in that it's not going to be stopped. If you're not uh, investing today, I expect you to pay. Got to move that <laughs> bubble. Uh, it's right here. I expect you to pay condos about sixty thousand more, townhouses about seventy thousand more, semis about eighty thousand more in 2020, and homes a hundred thousand or more in 2020, comparing to the exact same condo, townhouse, semi, or home you could have bought now in 2019. The few days left for less. Why is that? Let's look into why is that and what you can do about it. Okay. Um, these are the housing charts for Treb. Just go to trebhome.com or click Toronto Housing Market Charts on Google. You get this file. Okay. Um, what you can see, the orange is a 2019 and 2018 has beat uh, last year and mostly 2017 by every measure. Now, these are MLS sales. So 2016 and some of 17 was a bit rush, rush, rush. And there's a lot of uh, units resold on MLS. MLS is only resales. It does not count assignments. It does not count pre-construction. So it's, it's quite skewed in some ways. Uh, nonetheless, it's going to show you that 2019 is having a great run. And the average price of 2019 already eclipsed any price we've seen before since we started measuring real estate uh, maybe in the 50s or whenever that was. Okay, um, You can see here. Um, with the exception of a couple of uh, 2017, 2019 is going to just beat everything, okay? Um, page after page after page, chart after chart. This is the average resale home price. Now, that's a bit misleading because it takes the 416 and the 905, the condos, the homes, the semis, the towns, all together. But look what's happening here, okay? 2019 is beating everything. 2017, I had a couple months that it really, really peaked. That's okay. That will be over, overlap, eclipsed by 2019 and 2020. I expect to see prices way, way higher than we've ever seen them. Um, there's a very simple thing called supply and demand, and the the supply, you know, it's physical. You got to build those homes. It takes two to five years to design a condo, get the permits and all the red tape and all that stuff, and then you got to imagine how many like you need to bring a thousand concrete trucks to the middle of downtown Toronto in traffic. It just takes a long time. It takes years. Uh, these processes can take between four and ten years to build one building. I know it because I come from a construction family and I work with a lot of developers. So we've had a good run um, and then we have a bit of a drop but this is going to come up. Uh, now these are, these are a number of sales. One of the reasons that we're not seeing a lot of sales right now is because people are holding um, whatever they have. They don't want to sell it because they know it's going to be worth more. Uh, even though, um, and, and I think you know this by now, that the the condo market of the new construction, the new construction is way more expensive than pre-construction. A lot of people are still buying uh, pre-construction. Why is that? By the way, torontocondosforsale.com. Click on that link, Projects in Toronto, and it will bring you to this page here. You can start surfing all kinds of uh, all kinds of construction. So a lot of these uh, a lot of these downtown condos. Uh, are going now for about 1300 to 1500 a foot and there's exceptions for example uh, uh, the King West the West Bank King West there is 1500 to 2000 a foot they just started construction uh, Nordic condo you could have gotten in here for about a thousand dollars a foot a lot of these condos now um, if you can get into pre-construction a thousand dollar a foot like Nordic maybe they have a couple units I have a hot list so you can email me or call me and ask me uh, Galleria on the park uh, outsold out outsold uh, building one and two within literally minutes hours you know if their system was faster they'd sell it faster but there's there's so many people waiting there are about 10 people waiting for each and every unit 
that shows you two things. One is investors are realizing downtown is not everything. I still have people that come to me and say, but it's not downtown. So what? Why do you need to be downtown all the time? There's absolutely zero logic in this. Um, a lot of people come into Toronto from other areas, especially from China, where they want to be on the subway line. Those are cities of 10, 20, 30 million people. Toronto is not like that. The Toronto essence is of neighborhoods. Toronto was built in neighborhoods. You don't need to be close to the subway line. You need to be in an environment that encapsulates city living. So Galleria Mall, all these master plan communities, and I, I talked a lot about it this year, master plan communities, those are the way to go because once you go there, you really have support. Even Nordic, you know, and there's a lot of condos around Nordic, and there's a lot of services that you can just stay in your neighborhood and live there, okay? I wrote an article uh, earlier this year about uh, the top three, the top three master plan communities, and number one was the Well by Tridel. That's 1,400 foot, no less, and you can't really get a 500 square foot there for less than about you know 750 or 800 thousand dollars. And uh, you know Ian Gillespie, the uh, the owner and the visionary guy behind uh, West Bank from Vancouver, is building Vancouver's largest development now. Uh, it's massive, and it's going to get thousands of units including 20% of affordable units um, and he's still breaking every sales record okay but it's a master plan community uh, here's an idea here a and condos there's some great great units at the 1300 foot that is to me is a fantastic phenomenal project to invest you get design here you get free you get DuPont you you basically on top of Yorkville that's just an opportunity that a lot of people are missing even people that have the funds and the ability to invest they just don't get it there's there's so much information out there but you know, to find these few projects that are really, really good, it takes some time and takes effort. And frankly, you don't go to you don't you don't fix your own teeth, you don't fix your own plumbing. You know, there's a professional for everything. There's a professional for real estate. If you're looking to invest in real estate, speak with myself or someone like myself. That all we do is we focus on real estate investments. Okay, real estate investments. Why should we be here? What's the best unit? Right, left, up, uh, down, you know, uh, balcony, no balcony, on and on, on. it never stops. Um, but the point is that investors that are successful, they do two things, okay? The number one is they take action. They literally take action, they buy the unit, because if they don't, it's going to be more tomorrow and more tomorrow and more tomorrow. Think about it, uh, let's average is 1% a month, okay? So that $600,000 condo, okay, will be $6,000 more every month on average. 6000 by by $3,200. So every day you're not investing, you, you're losing potential $200 that you could have made or you're going to have to pay $200 more for every day that you have just twiddle D, twiddle down and didn't do anything. That is, that is a huge problem. And the main problem for all investors is they do not take action. Number two, of course, is they listen to bad, bad advice. Uh, somebody this week emailed me more than once. I got it from a couple people. I said, you know, I send them a few options, and somebody comes back and say, uh, I heard uh, really bad reviews about this developer. I read some. Who's writing these reviews? Is it me? They actually have a name. Can you see the credentials? No. These are these are just upset people, usually very young, that are still living in the basement, in the parents' basement, or renting, and just angry have all the right to be angry because it's it's not easy to to strike gold in this world but nonetheless you can make the choice <coughs> between being angry and being smart and work towards your goal and that's what i'm talking about here's another amazing opportunity 57 brock these units are going in around thousand dollar a foot and have some good units available here in the 600s and the 700s and the 800s this is the old um that was the the beer store on brock so that's Queen and Dufferin. So I used to live there already like, what is it, seven years ago in Parkdale. Okay, I had a beautiful loft there. And and people come to me, well, Parkdale, it's not that good. Well, you know, when I invested in King West in 2004, I already moved in. I started investing in King West 2000, almost 20 years ago. And people told me I was crazy. Are you crazy? West of Spadina, next Bathurst, all the drug people. And it's terrible. And then when we went to Queen West, where, you know, the Drake Hotel used to be a place called Al Capone, I believe. And people were shooting drugs in the basement of what's now is the Drake Hotel. Yes. And people told Jeff, the guy who built the Drake, oh, you're crazy to do this. No one's going to come. <laughs> now Jeff owns half of the block, the entire block. I think he owns it. He's building more. 
He's got stuff all over the world. It's just unbelievable. You have to have vision, okay? You have to have vision and you have to have the guts to go and do it. If you're not doing it, you know, he's just not moving. The most important thing is to take action. Take affirmative action every day to positive action every day. So many investors throughout the years, you know, for every one investor. Now here's a great example, Waterworks, which is right here. And this thing was selling for $800 a foot. $800 a foot. And people said, this is crazy. But of course, they sold out. And now it's under construction. And it's going to be one of the most beautiful places ever. They got like a huge food hall. A huge food hall. I've seen these around the world, you know, in New York. It's called... Uh, It'll come to me. In Tel Aviv, I've seen I've seen one of those, you know. And basically, you got the food hall at the bottom, which is all this place you can go and get your like slice of pizza or some fancy food. It's a beautiful closed-up space, it's like a modern style market. And then there's some uh, I think there's a Y, a large Y going in there, and some discount or uh, co-op apartment or whatever it's called, community living. And then on top, these are the condos, and those were eight hundred dollars a foot, and now they're sixteen hundred a foot, sixteen double the price. Remember, you only invest 20% of that or 15% of that. So 20% of 800, a quarter of 800 is $200 a foot. So if you were buying a unit, a thousand square feet, um, you're not really, you were not really paying $800,000 for it, which sounds really cheap today. You're paying $200,000 and the 600 is a mortgage. What happens when it comes to 1.6 million that unit? You put 200 down and you profit and, and then you can, let's say you get 1.6 million, just gross on gross calculation. That means that that 200 made itself eight times, eight times in say four or five years. That is insane. But it's harder and harder to do this because to go from 1300 a foot to 2600 a foot is going to be a, a huge, a more, or 1600 to 3200 is a more challenge to go from 800 to 600. You see what I'm saying? So if you're not buying, if you're not buying the $1,000 a foot today, you're going to buy the same $1,000 a foot today, tomorrow for $1,100 in 2020, and, and for $1,200 in 2021. That's $200 every day you got to put out of your pocket to buy the same condo, the same investment next year. And if you want to delay by two years, you better prepare yourself 200 times 365 times 2, so $400 a day over the next year in order to buy the year after. Why would you do this? If you, if, if you can afford it now, okay? York with Luxury Real Estate, by the way, I got this Investor Insider pop-up now. You put your name, your email, and mobile, and you get information. You get the best newsletter. It's a brand new newsletter, Investor Insider. I've been working on it for quite a bit. Last couple of weeks, I'm very proud of it and happy with the results. And it's links to information, to listings, to hard to find stuff, to reduce stuff, to assignments, to investment videos, anything that I can share with you absolutely free it's all my work everything is free everything is in a public domain use it enjoy it whatever you want uh, 609 Avenue you know I have a couple of assignments in there that is an amazing building whoever invested their 800 foot you know even if they sell at a thousand or 1200 foot they're very happy because they made they made so much money don't forget the original investment was only 15 to 20 percent you don't actually invest the whole amount or well, people argue with me say you know should I go a few for morals up? It's twenty thousand more. I go, but on that twenty thousand, you're only paying twenty percent of it, a fifth, which is uh, four thousand dollars, and that's divided into four payments, right? So a thousand dollar more for payment. So think about it: for a thousand dollar more per payment, you can go up, say, five floors. Wouldn't you do that? Of course you would. But no, people are not. People will go down to the bottom floor and try to get all these a thousand bucks here, not realizing. First of all, you're not saving anything. You're only saving 20% or 15% of that amount you, you've taken off. But reality, you're not going to be able to buy that ex, the good unit. Maybe it's more expensive now, but it's a much better unit. Okay, if you can go on the top here for just a little more, why wouldn't you? You always want to go up to the top as much as you can, as long as it makes sense. You know, um, The reason I would be on, on the bottom floor is because that's the only thing I can afford. I need to get in. Or it's really an amazing deal. I think I can flip it for so good. Or it's going to be a... <coughs> so the fire alarm at the uh, cafe <coughs> just went off. <coughs> oh, in the building above it. So here they come. I had to stop recording. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go uh, just keep telling you the story from here. <laughs> and uh, thank God for these good guys to help us every time we need them. 
appreciate that. So here is here's what's going on, okay? Um, everything's going up the price. It's inflation. The cost of food is the easiest one to track just when you shop for food. Look how much you pay more all the time. Even the TTC wants to raise the price by, you know, 10 cents. We think 10 cents, or maybe it's not a lot, but, and, and that's only maybe $3 a month or, you know, $30 a year, whatever you pay for it. But it's, it's a little bit here and 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 it never stops. Okay, now the condos, you can see the condos. The thing with the condos are, is <laughs> that it has to go up because it's the economic engine. It's tied to inflation, it's tied to jobs, it's tied to Canada's immigration. If the price of real estate stops, Canada stops. And the government of Canada knows very well that it has to keep the game going. And besides, there's so much money here, whether it's coming to Canada from outside of Canada or inside Canada, um, it's got to go somewhere. So the stock market is all-time high, the real estate is all-time high, everything is all-time high. And as we expand as a society and we expand our technologies and create more ways to create value, everything goes up in price because everything is translated to capitalistic measures of value by dollar, value by number, okay? That's, that's how we do it here. So that's why the market's going up and it will go up. And the only way you can do um, really anything about it is either to be the next Elon Musk or invent some crazy app to yourself for a billion dollars to Google or to Facebook, or you can invest in real estate, which is what the rest of us do. <laughs> you know, I don't know how to program uh, apps, um, but I know a lot about construction. I know about real estate. I know a bit about economy. I know a bit about finance. You know, <laughs> 20 plus years of studying this, so you get somewhere. I mean, I've done my 10,000 hours many, many times over. So what you should do is you should go. You know, you're the average uh, uh, smart man once said, Jim Rohn, you're the average of the five people you hang out with the most. So hang out with investors, talk to investors, hang out with experts. Um, do not listen to any ill advice. Uh, those people just didn't make it and now they want you not to make it. So if somebody says, oh, I read a bad negative review, I say, I don't care for negative people because they're not investors. They're not making it. That's why they're not investing because they lost and they're angry and they can't bring themselves to the point where they can actually make great investment. Look at this beautiful restaurant. It's absolutely gorgeous. I've never eaten here, but it looks amazing. And this was nothing, it was deserted for many years, but somebody came and created value here. Okay, so they made the investment, uh, got the place, paid the rent, did the permits, designed it, brought everything in, hired the people, and now you get a beautiful restaurant. And of course, jobs. There's people here at the door waiting to get in, and I see some people at the back of the kitchen, they're working. So we have value. That value translates to real estate values. So here's the Kingly. That was $600 when uh, people bought it, and now the resale is about 11 to 12. Exact same condo, double the price. Now the people that paid $600 a foot, they didn't pay 600, they actually paid 20% of it. 120, that's it. The rest is mortgage. So if you buy yourself uh, 1,000 square feet here at, uh, at uh, $600 a foot, you paid 600,000. <laughs> What can you get for it now? One bedroom, maybe with a little den. That's it. And now t t two bedroom, 1,000 square foot you bought is at least a million bucks now. So you can ask a million bucks for it and you invested only 120. Now somebody's gonna give you, a, they, let's say somebody gave you a million bucks, it's 900, okay? Um, you sold it for 900, that's 300,000 profit. Uh, but don't forget, you didn't invest the whole 600, you invest 120. So 300, over 120, that's about two and a half times. So that's two and a half, and plus your 120 back, of course. So that's your two and a half times investment. That's not bad. I mean, where else can you say, okay, like you sign here, you deposit your 120 in four payments of 5% each, and then uh, you come back four years later, three to five, say four years later, and it's two and a half times your money. That is ridiculous. That's 250% return on your investment divided by four. What is that? 60 something? 62 and a half percent. Okay, uh, you can do one or two percent at the bank, or you can do 60 percent in real estate, even 10 percent. Even anything more than two is good. But here's what's going to happen those who are not investing today, 
they just you know and I have so many for every one person I invest I probably speak with 50 they do not uh, maybe out of those 50 a few invest with other agents on the projects totally fine um, but most of them just don't and when they don't they become thinner and poorer every day and then of course they get angry and they're like oh I'm not I can't invest here and I can't invest there and now it's too expensive and I missed the boat and now they ha have to be they have to start investing areas outside of what they originally planned to invest. Now, a lot of people, I talked about at the beginning of the video, a lot of people investing in areas like downtown. They want to be close to the subway. But why? There's no parks. There's nowhere to go. You can't even take the subway because it's too busy. Even if they're only worth 50 bucks more every day, is not enough. <laughs> When's the last time you made 50 bucks every day without doing anything? I don't know. It doesn't happen. Ah, wait, it does happen. You buy an appreciating asset and an asset that actually makes you money, not to lose this money like a car, and you start investing in these assets, you're collecting these assets, and you tend to them like it's your garden, and you're going to be doing really well, okay? But if you're going to look at the faults and the problems, it's just not going to happen for you. You have to free your mind. Like uh, what's his name says in the matrix, free your mind and see the big picture. 2020 is going to break all records. 2019 has, 2020 will break them. 2021 will break them. You know, unless there's some global catastrophe because now we're all connected. So unless there's some serious global catastrophe, like a huge war or China goes belly up or something like really crazy. Half of the world blows up for some reason or sinks underwater, whatever. It's just going to keep going the same. And the expectation of all the people that we know and all the people around us is it's going to continue the same. That's why they're buying. If you're buying, very good. If you're not buying, you need to call me and we'll have a coffee or tea, whatever you prefer. And we'll talk about these things. But you got to take action. You got to do the research, find the right information stick around the right people and ignore all the noise ignore all the negatives and go for it it's not that difficult now a lot of people that watch these videos and they call me they already said you yeah, are invested here and I invested there and i look at their portfolio I go well maybe it's they didn't make the best decision investing um, but at least they did something and they invested so they're not on the whole they're above now how can we improve the portfolio the way to improve the portfolio is of course to sell the underperforming assets, which are the condos are like not the best ones or maybe they didn't have enough money and they did it then. So get rid of those. And yes, there's some cost to sell them. So what? Just do it. And then take that money and, and improve your positions. Just like you're playing chess. Improve your positions. This, this is the chess of life. <laughs> you need to improve your positions and making better decisions all the time. And you know the phrase, failing my way to success. Failing my way to success. That's what I'm doing here. Okay, that's it for today.